Well, my name's Simon Wheeler and uh, I'm the director of digital at the Beggars Group of Labels based in London. Um, we have 13 offices around the world. We're 100% independent and have been for the 30 years plus that we've been going. Our aim is to sign the best, uh, in our opinion, the best independent artists out there and, and to try and make them as popular as possible across the world. Well, I started working at uh, Beggars uh, about 20 years ago now. Um, and back in those days, it was, so this was about 1990. Uh, the, you know, the CD was pretty much at its peak. Um, record companies were probably making more money than they ever have done before. Um, it was all about physical product. We still had cassette tapes on the shelf, which is a pretty strange idea nowadays. Um, I think the big change for us really came with the advent of digital technology and the internet. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be at a big trade fair in 1997 with my chairman um, and he said come and meet these companies. Um, they're, they're working on this thing called the internet and it's, it, it, it's going to enable people to deliver digital music to people. And, and these two companies, just talking to them, they were talking about how, how the internet and the web would revolutionise um, music being able, enabling companies like ourselves to deliver music direct to our fans all around the world without having to make distribution deals or licensing deals. And this just seems a, a, a total revelation for us. Um, certainly in countries like America, distribution for record companies was the main uh, way of controlling the market. And pretty much all the distribution channels everywhere in the world was controlled by the four major labels. You know, it wasn't such a bad thing. It was a functioning system. People were making a lot of money. But we did have to work within this environment, which we didn't naturally fit in. Uh, the major labels were very happy to take our biggest acts and, and push them out to people. But we had all these other acts in our catalogue, which we were really proud of and really wanted to... Um, deliver their music to people, expose people to their music, and yet these distribution channels were really geared towards the top few acts which were coming through from us. So this, this got me and my boss thinking quite a lot, and we got very excited about the idea that, you know, maybe this is how we can um, um, take a bit more control of our own destiny. Uh, at the time, I was, I was packing boxes and, uh, and uh, dealing with our export customers, and we had a really healthy export business, selling vinyl, selling CDs to different, different companies all around the world. So we knew there was a market all around the world for our music, and we suspected there was a bigger market, because if you bought a record on uh, import, it was twice the price of a local record, if not more. So these, these people that were buying our records were paying a very expensive price for our music, they were ordering the product. It was taking sometimes weeks to arrive. They'd be waiting for it. They paid their money. They went through all of these hurdles to get our music. So we suspected that there was a lot more people there, that if we made it easier, faster, simpler, cheaper, that, that we'd have a much bigger audience there. So, so, so we got very excited about the possibility of this. And my boss said to me, if this is the sort of thing which you which you feel passionate about, and you seem to be one of the few people in the company that actually knows what it is anyway, um, then, then why don't you go and run with it and see where it takes us? That was 1997, so fast forward to sort of 12 years to where we are now, and our digital business is a multi-million pound business, or multi-million dollar business, depending on what, which country you're looking at. And we have taken control of our own distribution throughout the world digitally, we license uh, all digital services around the world ourselves. We don't pass our rights to anyone else uh, to go and license for us. It means that we're in control of the value of our rights. It means that we can have the marketing and promotional conversations with the partners who are selling our music direct. And no one can sell our music as, as, as well as we can. You know, no one can sell their music better than the original owner, the people that's passionate about it and uh, our market shares increased, which isn't the biggest deal to us, but it's very important when people look at the industry numbers. And, and we've grown as a company 
you know, massively. We're in a position that many industries would absolutely die to be in. Our consumers, our fans, want our product. They can't get enough of it. It's just that they're getting it in ways, in, in a large amount, that we're not getting paid for at the moment. So it's our challenge to be able to deliver the music that we make to our fans in a way that they want to consume it and in a way that we make some money back. And it's not a trivial challenge. If it was easy, we would have worked this out a long time ago. It is the top end of the market which has suffered most. The five million sellers are maybe selling one million. And, and that's the difference at that end of the market. Um, and that revenue is pretty hard to replace. The middle part of the market seems to be relatively robust. The bottom end of the market is a really tough place to be because there's so much noise. You've got to make yourself heard and generally on relatively small budgets or no budgets. So it's the top end which is feeling the financial pain. It's the bottom end which is feeling the frustration of not being able to get heard over all the noise. And it's the middle part which is staying kind of okay, dropping a bit. It's really hard to get those numbers. But, but that's how I kind of see the market. So will we see another Madonna, Michael Jackson? Beatles, definitely not. I mean, I'm not sure we're going to see those kind of superstars in the future, but I think we're going to see a lot more artists in the middle part of the market, which should have much longer careers, but at more sort of like, you know, medium level. Um, I think that's possibly where the industry is going to go. Um, I think the record industry has to be flexible. It's got to be tough on the value of its music. It's not going to be taking any deal which is out there because we're desperate. We're not desperate. We need to make the right deals for our music and deliver the right value back to our artists. Because if we don't deliver value back to our artists, then we have no role in this. You know, that is our role, is to find the right artists, to invest and to develop them, to take the work which they produce and try and deliver it to the widest possible audience and get the best return that we can so that they can continue to make work. Um, it's kind of quite clear to us that if we stay focused on finding the right artists and having the right resources in place to do that, then, then we can keep on going for a while. Uh, other people seem to think that the future is taking a piece of every single revenue which is created around an artist, and that's definitely a strategy. It's not one which we've decided to go down, although we do reserve our right to change our mind at any point in time if we wish. But we think staying focused on discovering the best music and being able to develop, promote and market that music is, is, is our core skill set. And, and, and that's what we're staying at for, for, for this point in time, at least. I think for each artist, they've got to make up their own mind whether they want to spend their time um, being the voice of the band, communicating, doing all, all the work that's got to be done, or whether they want to spend more of their time producing the music and honing their art and, 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 and improving their art. And there's probably a balance to be struck because a band that doesn't do any self-promotion actually is not the kind of band we want to sign. But the band that spends all their time doing the self-promotion probably aren't spending enough time on their music for it to be good enough. So there's, there, there's a balance to be struck there. And, and generally, that's, that's why a manager gets involved, because they can take some of the workload away from an artist and, and, and give the artist the, the time or the resource to spend on the music. But, but it is a balancing act. Artists have got to do more than they used to, but there's a danger they can do too much. There's mystique, which needs to be kept to a certain degree. And, and, and that sort of helps build a band's career as well. I think what we need now, uh, you know, the next stage in the market is you've got 100 companies selling downloads. Well, what's the difference between you all? What's your selling point? Why should I be using you? What can you deliver me? You've got this massive catalogue. How can I find my way through it? How do I know what's good? When I know a bit about music, I don't know that much. I want you to help educate me, me about music. So discovery, recommendation, that filtering again, trusted, trusted partners being able to tell you what's interesting music, 
and, uh, and, and what you're likely to enjoy. I think that's probably the next evolution. You know, I think what would be ideal is just being able to switch on a service and say, I feel, I've had a great day, I feel really up, I'm going to go out tonight, play me some music. And it plays me music which I know, some music I don't know, but which music I like, which suits my mood, and it works without me having to go, oh, fast forward, oh, I love that one, oh, I hate that one. You know, that's, that's where we need to get to, and that's a bit further down the line, being able to tap into people's emotional, um, you know, emotional state of mind, or even their emotional attachment to music. But I think we've got a long way to go before we get there.